1 Samuel 30. Now this is, I know this, obviously, this is like 4,000 years old. Believe it or not, back in those days, the enemy would take hostages. Can you believe how awful and brutal they were back then? You know, we've come a long way, right? You know, we're sophisticated, we've grown, and we would never think of taking hostages and, oh, how primitive. But let me show you, let me show you some history. So David and his men left their wives and kids at Ziglag, and they're out fighting the Philistines. So we read, verse 1, David and his men reached Ziglag on the third day. Now the Amalekites had, raised, had raided the Negev and Ziglag. They had attacked Ziglag and burned it and had taken captive the women and everyone else in it, both young and old. They killed none of them but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men reached Ziglag, they found it destroyed by fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men, what's the first thing you should do when you're thinking about war or what you see stuff going on like this? What's the first thing you should do when, when rockets are fired and innocent people are killed or people's necks are thrown or, or babies are shot? What, what's, what's the first thing you should do? Cry and weep. If you've got the heart of Jesus and, you, if, you know, God weeps when, when God saw how wicked the earth was in the days of Noah, he's, he's like, ah, oh, why did I make people? I gave them this free, ah, oh, I'm sick. I, I, I'm, he's, he's devastated. God's got feelings. If you've got Jesus in you, you've got to be weeping and crying over this. Sometimes Christians act just so tough, like, ah, let's go in and kill these people and we'll kill this nation. I'm like, what are you talking about? It should make you cry. That people so hate each other and that this is where we're at in 2023 that we're, that we're dealing with dead bodies. You should be crying and weeping. So, verse 3, when David and men reached Ziglag, they found it destroyed by fire. Okay, verse 4. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. David's two wives had been captured. And I don't know how to say this woman's name. I, I know know him. Of just real. And Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel, I'll be preaching on her next week. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of what? Stoning him. The men were like, hey, David, we followed you. You were our leader. And, and we left our wives and children unguarded. And because we followed you, they got captured and taken as we're, we're stoning you, we're killing you. See, that's a natural, because it says they were bitter. It says each one was bitter in spirit. Because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. You know, over in Israel, I noticed there, this, there's talk of stoning. They're saying to the leaders, why didn't your intelligence tell you that Hamas was preparing to attack? You should have known. You need to be fired. You need to be held responsible that your intelligence, secret agents, whatever, that you didn't know this was going to happen. Shame on you. It reminds me, by the way, in 1980, an incident I went through when I graduated college. The Iranians had kidnapped 52 Americans, and Jimmy Carter, Christian, was president at the time. And so he decided, I'm, I'm going to go in. Well, I, I am sure it wasn't just him. I am sure he sought guidance What's the first thing you do when, when Americans are captured and hostages? Weep. And then what's the second thing you do? Pray. I'm sure Jimmy Carter prayed. And um, so this was new. We had, we're always ill-prepared. So if you read this, you'll find out that the United States had never done this kind of stuff before. And the military is like, well, we've, we've never practiced. Okay, let's try to put 11 helicopters and some men that will get special training. But they never were trained in hostage rescue like this. And, and so as you know, they hel the 11 helicopters go over to the Middle East. The sand, the helicopters didn't deal with sand. And it took out two or three of them. Some of them crashed into each other. Some men were killed. And it was the military that then came to the president and said, we can't do it. We, we're ill-prepared. We're losing our equipment. We, we cannot do the rescue. We can't go in. And so the military is the one that told the president, we're, we're out. And, so, and the president, as any good leader does, 
takes the hit himself and says, I've made the decision as the leader of the country that we aren't going to go in. And he got stoned, right? We voted him out. We fired him. And he knows he lost that election because he took the hit. Now, for me, I don't know what I would have done. I would have been send in 50 helicopters next time. Let's, let's go back again. But let's take 50 helicopters. But again, I don't know the condition of the military at that time and, and situation. And I'm sure that probably was discussed. <laughs> 